to take a spectrum then, we are going to open the OPUS program, right? That's the first thing on the agenda after we've logged into the computer. Yep. So click on OPUS, uh, a screen comes up, which offers us the chance to, to log in. That is weird how it's not showing up there, isn't it? Maybe Rez is doing the camera or something. Maybe. 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 Did that help it? I'm starting to see something. Are you? I can see the box. You can see the box? I can see a little bit of the login box. <laughs> well, we'll see how this The password is OPUS with all capital letters. So it'll beep at us a little bit, and then we'll, we'll have a chance to say, okay. Go ahead and hit okay. And then the screen opens, that is really funky. That's just spectacular. There, is that better? No, I don't. There, that looks better. All right, so to take a measurement then, uh, we want to click on the measure. We can either do it with the icon that looks like a um, looks like a test tube spike going through it, or there's a menu item, measure. And if we click on measure, then we want to go to advanced measurement. Okay. And so a window pops up, and there are several tabs across the top here. Um, the first thing that our protocol encourages us encourages us to do is click on the experiment. So the way this program works, anything that shows up as yellow means it needs your attention. Okay? Um, there's nothing yellow now, but uh, it might show up, something might show up as yellow, and maybe the tab on the top will, uh, will become a different color. Okay? So we want to if we want to load an experiment, uh, we click load, and the protocol rec recommends MIR organic. Okay, MIR organic, and we can hit open. All right, so now that uh, those instrument settings have been have been scored. Um, if we want to change the sample name, we can we can do that. Okay. So suppose we want to change the change the sample name. We'll use Grover as our sample name. And sample form, we can write liquid. Liquid Grover. Um, so that's on the basic tab. If we click on the advanced tab, then we can change the resolution. All right. Right now it's set to four wave numbers of resolution. That's pretty good. Um, it's also set to do 32 scans for both the sample and the background. That's also pretty good. Um, the more scans you do, the better your spectrum will be, but the more time it will take. So the signal to noise, uh, typically if you double the number of scans, the signal to noise will be reduced by a square root of two. Okay. So a way to get better, better spectra is to do more, more scans, but it's going to take more time. So right now it's set to 32. Um, and then you'll have the, 
data limits. So right now it's set to go from 4,000 wave numbers to 700. A lot of times the materials that we use kind of have some uh, limit here on the low end where they start sort of crapping out. Okay, so 700 is okay. Um, we don't really use much below that anyway. The spectrum, um, right now it's set to record transmittance. If you really wanna be mean to your fellow organic students, uh, come in here and change that to absorbance, and then everything will be upside down. It'll start at the bottom and go up, okay? Um, if you are interested in doing something where you're like trying to track concentration in the lab, then absorbance is what you want. Because Beer's Law applies in the IR just as much as it does in the IR. But for right now, just to look at like what peaks are there and stuff, transmittance is the way to go. Um, so let's go ahead and take a measurement. So the way that we do a measurement is in the basic tab and we just hit uh, background single channel. Boom. Right. Now I don't know if we can see it. And there's a green bar that says background and it's giving us an update, 18, 19, 20 scans done. So once it gets up to 32 scans, then it's gonna tell us it's all finished. Okay. All right, so it's all done. The um, area that had been green on the lower right um, is now not green, meaning there's no active plasma. So it's all finished. So we can go ahead and uh, put some, let's use methanol. Just use methanol as our spectra. So we're going to put the the liquid containing well on there. We'll clamp that down. Then I'm going to squirt some methanol in. Whoa! Settle down, David. <laughs> that was a lot of methanol. Uh, but now we can do sample single channel. And now our, our green bar is back indicating that we're doing something. And you can watch the numbers count up to 32. Which we don't want. You bet there's an OH. There should be. I hope there is. It's probably going to be smaller than it would be if we were doing transmission measurements. This is, um, no, so we're looking at um, attenuated total reflectance. There are other ways to do the, these measurements where your light actually goes right through the methanol sample. The problem is you have to have a really thin sample. So if we, if we were to do that, then we'd see something wrong. Okay, so this looks like our, like our spectrum. Okay, it's kind of small. Uh, Things don't look all that spectacular yet. So let's uh, let's fix that. So what I'm gonna do is right click on the graph and scale spectra show everything, okay? So then it normalizes it, right? Uh, this is, that is something I would accept. Things that we want to keep an eye out for, okay? Um, when you do an IR spectrum transmit in transmittance mode, your, your baseline is actually up here at 100, okay? It should not go above 100, okay? And for goodness sakes, if you have spikes going above 100, then you have to read them. okay? So, so we've got... We've got an OH peak here. We've got CH stretches, right? Uh, we've got, I don't know what that is. And we've got something big down here, okay? Um, sometimes you'll see 
some uh, some stuff up in here from carbon dioxide. Okay, if we want to get rid of that, carbon dioxide latches onto the crystal sometimes, as does water. So sometimes we want to get rid of that. So let's go ahead and get rid of that stuff. So if we want to clean up our spectrum a little bit, let's go to, uh, I'm going to go to view, okay? And I'm going to click on browser, All right? So that shows me some different, different files. So if we have different measurements on the, on the program at the same time, we can navigate back and forth between them. I'm also going to go to manipulate. I'm going to manipulate the data and click on atmosphere compensation. Now I can't see it on my camera screen here. Pull this up just a bit. Okay, so we manipulate and then atmospheric compensation. We'll click on that and then we tell it what file to use. And what I always do is I just take the whole thing and drag it over. And then I take the whole thing and drag it over. So we put something in both boxes. It needs a reference spectrum and it needs a, uh, um, a sample spectrum, but it's smart enough to tell which is which. So I just put the whole thing in both blocks. And then you uh, click on compensate for water, compensate for CO2, this isn't an aqueous solution, so let's not do that. But if we did have an aqueous solution, then we could do that compensation. And then we hit calculate, okay? And you might see it clean up some of this stuff. Let's see if it does that. Did it do anything? Didn't really do anything, okay? Well, that's good. I mean, we had, means we had a good spectrum. All right, so suppose we want to export this. What are the directions for exporting the data? Insert flash drive. Insert, insert flash drive, okay. Uh, thought I brought my flash drive down. It's in my pocket. I ordered you all flash drives, by the way. They should be in today from uh, Amazon. I did a search on Amazon for Hillary drive. Okay. Um, books about Hillary. <laughs> so it wasn't. I didn't find what I was interested in. Apparently, that's not a common name for those things. Shouldn't have said all that. Wording. Probably going to get myself on the list somehow. Yeah. Okay. We're all on some list. We're all on some list, amen. All right, so we're gonna go to, as I say, go to file. And what are we doing? Save file as, okay, that's right up here. All right, save file as, uh, we gotta click on path, right? Or change path. And then it gives us an option to uh, E, okay. All right, so now we're on the E drive. We'll just leave it right in the main directory there. And file name, methanol, which is also Grover. And there are other things we want to change in looking at mode. Um, it says data point table, so it's going to give us frequency and transmittance in kind of like a, um, a, a file format we can open with Excel. Um, and then data point table just says all yeah, that's fine. And then let's uh, let's select all these things. See what happens. 
That sound all right? Yep. Say. Okay, so now if we look at the look at that E drive, let's see what we saved. You guys see anything? Is this the drive itself? Yeah. Yeah, methanol on the bottom left. Methanol right there, right? Double click. Double click on it, see what it's Let's open it in Notepad to tell us what it says. Okay, so now it's it's uh, frequency and then transmittance. Um, it's not percent transmittance. It's just the number. Just the number. Yep. So you could multiply it by a hundred um, in Excel if you. All right, so there you go. Uh, I use this uh, Excel messaging where I go open up my own. Yeah, so if you wanted to, Excel if you wanted to open that in Excel, and we open up Excel 2007, which is the latest version, and uh, save as. File open. See if we can navigate to it. Probably need to tell it to show us everything. Nothing all is there. Yes. We know what we're doing. And so then we want to uh, try and get this thing to import. Let's see. Oh, that looks like it did just fine. We can scroll down. Yeah, that looks just just dandy. And if we wanted to make a graph, highlight A and B, go to insert, and we want to insert a scatter plot. Well, where's these scatter plots? Uh, Maybe this one. We might have too many points to have actual dots. Okay. It is backwards. It is backwards. And we for sure want to uh, right away um, get rid of those lines. We don't like those. Grid lines. Yeah, we don't like those at all. We are not a fan of grid lines. And Excel does not is not used to printing IR things, so we need to we need to uh, format the axis, okay, and then we can click on values in reverse order. So there, fixed it, okay, and let's fix our max at four thousand, and we'll fix our minimum. Uh, 700, right? Looks pretty good. And then we do the same with the Y axis. Now, newer versions of Excel, these commands are a little bit different. So you'll have to navigate through that. But we can fix both of these. We can go up to like 1.05. And it looks like your 0.7 might be the lowest. Okay. So that, that does look pretty good. We might want to make that even a little more stringent. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, and then we would put in put in labels and title. Oh my goodness, yes. 
format axis, uh, tick marks inside. That does look so much better. Uh, we are not Philistines. The tick marks go inside. There we go. And what would you much happy would you much happier this frequency of the upper mark? And what, what would you do the y axis to just go So so let's go ahead and we'll yeah I would label the the um I would label the x axis as frequency and label the label the y-axis as uh, transmittance. So just like that. And then two mouses right there. Frequency and units on frequency are inverse centimeters. So you can put that in as one over CM. That works. Or you can put, it, you can uh, do centimeters to the inverse one and figure out how to do a superscript. So that looks pretty good. I am going to I'm going to move this um, I'm going to change that title. Let's see if I can change that title. Might have to do something different with that. Select data. Now I can Edit the series name. Uh, nothing all. Okay. And then let's uh, let's change the position where that legend is at, and let's put the. Um, I actually want to put it inside the chart. There. And then maybe move that legend around. So there. So but we've got methanol on the top, so we could just delete that. There's only one thing on top. Right. And we probably want to, just to make it super pretty, Format that, um, put in a border around the whole graph area. Okay, we have to go to border, color, solid line. Make it black. Sweet. Now we might want to like put put the y act get the y axis over here. It, like it would you would normally anticipate. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, let's see the way it looks. All right. Hey, let's uh let's stop this thing. <laughs>